Thomas Chapel International presents the Overcomers Convention 2019. Theme, Seven for Significant Impact. Ministering at OC 2019 are Reverend Dr. Isaac Quay, Bread of Life Christian Center, Bishop Gideon Titi Ofer, Pleasant Place Church, Reverend Dr. Michael Boyding Yamiche, the Maker's House Chapel International, and Prophet Prince from Pong, Kingdom Praise Ministries USA. It's from Wednesday 27 November to Sunday 1st December 2019, 6 p.m. from Wednesday to Saturday and 9 a.m. on Sunday at the Tehila Temple Harvest Chapel International, South Tesano. Morning sessions on Friday 29th and Saturday 30th November with Dr. David Eldon Schroeder from the Pillar College USA. Spread the word and don't come alone. Your host is Reverend Fitzgerald Odonko. Music by Harvest Gospel Choir and others. declarations we are expressing our faith and our faith is that God will make the impossible possible our faith is that he will lift up those that are down our faith is that he will cause waters to break forth even in the desert place so I don't know what your expectation is tonight but the news that I have is that God will go beyond your expectation and by clapping your hands by thumping your feet on the ground, by giving a shout, you are declaring that you are with a winner. You are with a champion. You are on your way. Nothing can stop you. Nobody can stop you. No system can stop you. No principality, no power, no devil, no witch, no wizard. Nothing can stop you. You are on your way and you are with a champion. Give the Lord a shout tonight. The atmosphere is shifting. 
Defeat is giving way to victory. Darkness is giving way to light. Heaviness is giving way to praise. Do you believe that? And tonight, I am welcoming, welcoming you very specially to the third day of our Overcomers Convention in our year of significant impact. Let me hear you make some noise tonight. Even when people have victories that have nothing to do with themselves, that they don't benefit from, they clap and they shout and they scream. But this victory has something to do with you. It has something to do with your breakthrough. It has something to do with your healing, with the lifting up of your head. It has something to do with your deliverance. So give the Lord another shout of praise. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the King of Kings. It's all about the Lord of Lords. And tonight, we are very blessed. Say, I am blessed. Say again, I am blessed. Since it's the third day, say, I am blessed. I want to acknowledge the presence in our midst of all our pastors and uh, our leaders, our deacons, our elders. Clap for them for their faithful service. We have our regional overseers with us and uh, we also have an international delegation I believe led by our pastor Reverend Yankee is he here tonight yeah I'm sure he'll be here tomorrow uh, from Canada and then also we have our sister love coming all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. I cannot slang like the Americans, so I say Atlanta, Georgia. Hallelujah. And tonight also, we have in our midst, those of you who were here this morning, I am sure the atmosphere is shifting. Hallelujah. By the grace of God coming all the way from the United States of America, the president of the Pillar College, and also of Masterworks Incorporated, Dr. David Eldon Schroeder, he's with us this evening. Doc. For those of you who are here, he was with us last year. Maybe you can't recognize him because now he's good at prophetic beard. <laughs> but I want to give a special invitation to all of us. Tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, either be here or be nowhere else. Because we are getting some revelations that will change your life forever. He's going to speak about the spiritual gifts, how to discover your gift, and how to use your gift. And so it is open and compulsory for everybody within the reach of my voice, including those following on social media. Let's be at 9 o'clock sharp tomorrow. And I can guarantee you by the grace of God, that it will be a life changing experience for you. So put aside the house duties, shift your washing to Monday, shift your cooking to Monday, Sunday night, adjust your visit to the saloon to Sunday evening. And let's be here. Hallelujah. 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 The great
greatest deception of the enemy will be to take you away from knowledge because he knows that without knowledge you will defeat him so anything that prevents you from coming here tomorrow morning I can safely call that thing the devil are you looking at me yeah it's me all right because I want your good and I want my good let's put our hands together once again for Dr. Schroeder thank you very much and now tonight fasting your seatbelts we are going on a journey of destiny on this third night of our overcomers convention God has graced us with the presence of his special and choice minister coming all the way from the kingdom praise ministries in New Jersey in the United States of America a man whose word does not fall to the ground because he's specially anointed by the Holy Spirit as a prophet and he's a very one he's one who is very dear to us as a ministry tonight let there be no movement because one word from the Lord can change your destiny forever so if you are as ready as I am tonight giving honor to whom honor is you let's put our hands together church and welcome prophet praise Come on, give God some praise tonight. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Almighty God. Bowing before your throne. We bless your name, Almighty God, bowing before your throne. We glorify your Lift up your two hands. We glorify your holy name. Bowing before your throne. You are God. Tap your hands onto Jesus. Like you, Lord. Rain. You are Lord. You are Lord. Hey,
Clap your hands for Jesus and take your seat in his presence. Come on, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. What an atmosphere. What a presence. Tonight we give God praise for the privilege given to us to be called sons and daughters of the kingdom. We don't take it for granted that he has made us co-laborers in his vineyard. It's a great honor that people like you and I will have access into his presence at any day in any time. And so tonight I want you to help me appreciate God for his goodness and his kindness over our lives. Clap your hands for Jesus. Give God praise for salvation. Give him praise for your redemption. Thank him for your deliverance. Thank God for who you are in him. And what he has made you in Christ Jesus. Thank you Jesus. And tonight I also want to salute the leadership of this house. By one man's obedience we all gather here. And we are all being blessed. This father has a great heart a man that has nurtured many and still doing that has mentored many and still doing a man that has stood the test of time and still standing a man that has seen things and yet behaves like he knows nothing he's been tested tried and proven he's a father he has the heart of a father. I want to salute Bishop Fitzodonko tonight for your great leadership, your love for this ministry, and your love for the work of God and the people of God. Your love for me and my family. I want to say thank you and to Mama Talma, we appreciate you, the woman you are. You are just an amazing woman of God. And God bless you for always believing in us. Reverend Titalati, you are just, like, just a big brother who... You, you, you show me kindness every day. You show that you care about me. And you show that you care about what God is doing with me. And I'm grateful to God for your life. Anytime I see Reverend Chrissy Dixon, I just remember school days, you know, that's all. He was my school prophet. He used to bully me small, small. You know, when the prophets are coming, you just have to, you know, behave yourself. But one thing I knew those days that he loved God and he's still loving God. Still serving. Reverend Christy, God bless you so much. And to all the great men of God and women of God standing and working in this great ministry, I salute the grace of God upon you in the name of Jesus. I love you and I appreciate all of you. Harvest, you are such a wonderful people. Amen. Tell somebody we are wonderful. Amen. And tonight I also want to thank God and I appreciate my mentor, a man who just took me in. He just guides me and says some deep things. Sometimes the things he says I don't like. But he doesn't matter whether doesn't matter whether I like it or not because he says them just the way they are. He makes sure that I become better and better every day. He makes sure that he extracts the best out of me. He pushes me. He encourages me. He visits me. He has time with me every now and then to talk, ask me questions. How are you doing? How is life? How is ministry? 
In this busy world where everybody's minding their own business, it's rare that somebody would take time off their busy schedule and just say, I love you and I want to know how you are doing. And this man does it effortlessly and he shows me great love. And so, <laughs> Dr. Schroeder, I want to say thank you for your mentorship, for your leadership, for your love. And I truly appreciate you. Amen. Recently, he pushed me to do something I wasn't willing to do. He said, you will do it and you can do it. And so go ahead and do it. And then he left me in the water to struggle by myself. The other day I said, where's the man who told me I should do it? But he's been so loving. The other day, he took me out for, to walk, go and watch a, a game, a sporting game. And uh, that was um, ice hockey. And you know that we Africans, we don't do things like that. If it is soccer, that's okay. So he said, let's go watch a game. I said, okay, let's go. She sent me a test. I said, let's go. And then later I showed the test to my wife and he said, did you read the test message very well? I said, no. He said, game. He said, no. He said, read the very well. And I read that it was ice hockey. And you know, we, we don't do that. We are already cold and you are taking me to go and sit in the ice and watch people play. But I followed him anyway because I love him. And when your mom tells us, let's go, so you have to follow. But the best part of that event was that when we went, he treated me like a child. He asked me, have you eaten? I said, no. He said, let's go and eat. So he took me to the bar, uh, to the place and chicken wings and all of those. and said, Prince, choose what you want and I will pay. And at that moment, I felt like somebody really cared for me because I don't remember the last time a father did that. So I chose, he paid, and I came, and I ate the thing very well. He thought I was enjoying the game. No. I was enjoying the chicken. The next time he called me, I said, I am coming. We went for the second time. And then he called me the third time and said, Prince, there's the game, and um, I have two tickets. I'm not going, so I want you to go. I said, no, I'm not going. Because the only reason why I go there is because of the chicken you buy. So if you're not going to buy me the chicken, why must I go and sit there and watch something? But I just want to say that you are such a great father. Thank you for the food. Great. Amen. So that's my little story with him. Amen. And tonight I bring you greetings from Kingdom Praise Ministries, New Jersey, and especially from my beautiful wife, my babe, my angel, my pastor. Yeah, yeah. When I talk about her, I get chills, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank God for good wives. And thank God for the gift God gives us. You must learn to appreciate your spouse every day because it is God's gift for your life. Amen. Tonight, I want to thank God for all those sons and daughters that came with me. It's been a wonderful time with you this morning. And I believe that the past two nights has been great. And tonight, I just want to add to what God is doing in this house. And tonight I'm speaking on the subject, the dangers of the anointing. The dangers of the anointing. And I'm reading from Judges chapter number 11, verse 1 to 11. The dangers of the anointing, Judges chapter 11, verses 1 through to 11. Now Japheth the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, but he was the son of a harlot. A Gilead began and Gilead begat Japheth. Japheth's wife bore sons, and when his wife's sons grew up, they drew Japheth out and said to him, you shall, know, you shall have no inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Japheth fled from his brothers and dwelt in the land of Tor. And worthless men and bonded together with Japheth and went out raiding with him. It came to pass after a time that the people of Ammon made war against Israel. And so it was when the people of Ammon made war against Israel that the elders of Gilead went up to get Japheth from the land of Tob. Then they said to Japheth, come and be our commander that we may fight against the people of Ammon. So Japheth said to the elders of Gilead, did you not hate me and expel me from my father's house? Why have you come to me now when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said to Japheth, That is why we have turned again to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the people of Ammon. 
and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. So Japheth said to the elders of Gilead, if you take me back, I, if you take me back home to fight against the people of Ammon, and the Lord delivers them to me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said to Japheth, the Lord will be a witness between us if you do not, if we do not do according to your words. Then Japheth went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and commander over them. And Japheth spoke all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. Verse 29 to 33. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Japheth. He passed through Gilead and Manasseh and passed through Mizpah of Gilead. And from Mizpah of Gilead, he advanced towards the people of Ammon. And Japheth made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver the people of Ammon into my hands, then I will be that whatever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the, to meet me when I return in peace from the people of Ammon shall surely be the Lord. And I will offer it as a burnt offering. So Japheth advanced through the people of Ammon to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hands. And he defeated them from Aror to Mineth, 20 cities, and to Ebel, uh, Karamim, with a mighty slaughter. Thus the people of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Shall we pray? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this moment. Holy Spirit, I declare that you stand in my body tonight. Think with my mind tonight and speak with my voice. Move in my spirit. Make my tongue like the pen of a ready writer. Spirit of the living God tonight, none of me and all of you to the glory of your name. Let the weak tonight be made strong, let the poor be made rich, and let salvation come to somebody. Let somebody live here and not the same. For Bible says, for unto you alone shall the gathering of the people be. We have not come unto any man, but unto you to receive of your grace. Therefore to now release grace upon us. Let the weak be made strong. Let the power be made real. Let there, let there be a manifestation of the manifesto of the kingdom upon your people. And let there be deliverance in the house. In the name of Jesus, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to know that each one of us has a gift as we were taught this morning. And sometimes it is called the grace of God. For Bible says we are all partakers of God's grace. So that gift you have is God's grace that has been given to you. And we have this gift in different levels and in different rankings. But God put this gift in us for specific assignments. Amen? And we are placed in specific places, in specific times to accomplish specific tasks. And when God put, in us, specific, put us in specific places at a specific time for a specific time, or a task, he then put upon us what we all call the anointing. Meaning that anointing comes upon us for a purpose. There was a reason why God will release that grace and that anointing upon your life. The anointing empowers you to do what you could not ordinarily do as a human being. And so God releases the anointing upon us so that we'll be empowered and enabled to stir up our giftings and take it to the level where we can maximize it and be a blessing unto God's people. Bible said when Saul met the company of the prophet, he became another man. There was something that was in him and when he met the company, it was stirred up and the thing came alive. Tonight, I declare in the name of Jesus that anything that is dormant in your life, any gift that is dormant in your life in this atmosphere, let that gift be stirred up in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
And if you help me, I want you to know that there was something that God has given you, like the man of God taught us this morning. We all carry gifts. But tonight, I came to stir up the gift of God, the grace of God, the anointing of God, whatever assignment God has given you tonight, you will rise in the strength and in the power, in the audacity of Jehovah, and you shall do it because God did not give you the gift just for entertainment, nor for yourself. He gave you the gift for the body, for the benefit of the body of Christ. He gave you so that people will enjoy it and be blessed by it tonight any gift and anything and any assignment that God has given you has stirred it up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and Bible said then Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and in favor with men and these things helped him help Jesus to grow in his anointing hear me I mean when you grow in wisdom it helps your anointing to function better when you grow in favor with God your anointing functions better when you grow in favor with men, trust me, your anointing functions better because the people must receive your ministry. And so Jesus made it a point to grow in the wisdom of God, in favor with God and with men, and he was physically stronger. Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 28, Bible says, when the five ingredients of the anointing oil comes upon the physical flesh of the priest, it turned them into different people. The anointing has the power to turn one person into another thing. And that's why today you know somebody walking about and you may consider him ordinary. The next day something supernatural hit him and you begin to do things that you do not understand. Today people have seen the ordinary side of you but tomorrow by this time when the convention shall be over, they will begin to see another side of you that they never saw. Tell somebody you don't know me yet. I mean, don't think you know me. You've only have a glimpse of who I am. You have a little idea of who I am. What is in the inside of me has not come out yet. Some of us, we carry some dynamite. We carry some explosion in us. The devil is messing with you because he doesn't know what to carry. But one of these days, when the grace of God and the oil of God will stir up the gift, Hayakoshi, will stir up the gift of God in you, the people that knew you and treated you anyhow, they will look at you in awe and they will ask, what happened? to you and you shall tell them that all along when you mistreated me and you maltreated me and you disregarded me I still carry some grace in the inside of me but now there's an oil that has come upon my life that has stirred the grace of God upon me hear me you may be going through some challenges and tribulations and, and serious issues in life and people may not regard you but in the midst of all of that there is still something that God has embedded in your spirit and tonight I came to declare that against all out. let the grace of God in you emerge let the spirit of God in you emerge and let the power of God in you come out I see something is about to be stirred up in your spirit you see sometimes I love it when people treat me anyhow because they don't know who I am so some people have treated you anyhow because they told you were nothing because they were judging you from one lens of life but tonight, <laughs> God is going to, for your sake, God will give them another lens. They will see something different, something they have not seen. For my Bible says that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. And it has not entered to the heart of men the things that God has in store for you. If only you know what you carry in the inside of you. You wouldn't allow your present situation to hold you back. Tonight, something is coming out of your spirit. If you shout that here, let it be so unto you. Something is going to come out. You've underestimated yourself for far too long. And you have allowed them to underestimate you for far too long. You look at your situation, you look at your life, you look at your congregation, you look at the caliber of people you have, you look at your educational background, you look at the family you were raising, and sometimes everything suggests that you cannot make it. And because of that, you bought into that idea that this is who I am, and this is what probably what I will be forever. But I came to announce to you, even though you are coming out of Nazareth, there was something bigger and something better in your spirit. And to not let God stir that thing in you. Somebody put your hand on your, on your mind and say something is being activated say it again say something is being activated tonight there's going to be a prophetic activation in your life something is coming alive your grace is coming alive your wisdom is coming alive your strength is coming alive you function on one level already but tonight I see another level because life has levels anointing has levels ministry has level I pray that you will not die where you are right now after tonight may you rise to another level of your life and of your ministry and of your destiny if you believe it shall yes I receive it 
Oh, tonight is going to be fun. I feel it. I feel it's going to be fun. Amen. Amen. There are things that are dormant and inactive in your spirit. There are hidden treasures that God has deposited in your spirit. But you don't know. You don't even know that they are there. But to not by the anointing, those things will be stirred up. But again, permit me to say that the anointing is also a process. Amen. The anointing is also what? A process. The anointing is a process. The anointing is not the oil that we just put on your head. The oil is an endorsement. But the real anointing is the process you submit to. I will say that again. The real anointing is the process that you submit to. And so let me say that if you want to become God's man, you have to go through God's process. And God has a process for everybody he calls. David was anointed three times and yet he never sat on the throne. The first anointing took him back to the bush. There are some anointing oil that comes upon you. It just introduces you to negativity. <laughs> Not because it's wrong, but because God wants to put you in a tight corner so that he can extract some grace out of your spirit so that he can extract some fighting spirit out of you because you must be able to stand the test of time and so until God tests you and proves you there's a place he will not take you so the anointing is a process and so for some of us the, most, the difficulties we are going through is, is God's process to extract oil out of us I thought you would say better amen to that some of us, our pain is God's way of building some oil within our spirit. Some of us, the betrayal, the rejection, the loneliness, because until God can get your full attention, he cannot fully communicate his divine purpose unto you. And that's the reason why God had to press a button and get Moses out of the, out of the palace so that he would be disowned, rejected by his own people. And when God sent him to the wilderness and there was nobody there, that was the time God had the opportunity to communicate to him the mysteries of the kingdom, the structure of the kingdom, kingdom model and kingdom principle. Moses was called to be a great deliverer. But he had different minds, a different model system in him. And that model system could not work with God's model. And God said, I got to detox so that I can rebuild you up. And so sometimes, God will have to take us through from our comfort zones. And mess you up a little bit. So that he can extract some oil out of you. So let's see four ways that God... Increases anointing in our lives. Four ways he increases anointing. Number one, I'll call it God's way. There are four ways the anointing can increase in your life. Number one, God's way. This is when God works on his man. Hear me, there are many things that happen to a man that is not demonic or devilish. It is God's working on the person's life. Sometimes, church, when something bad happens, why it's just God's way of working on a man. Our journey to becoming God's person and God's vessel, God has a way of doing a construction work on the person. And sometimes this construction work is going to take a little time. It's going to be tedious. It's going to be painful. But God will have to take his time to do some construction work on you. He has to chisel some things out of your life. And some of us, the only way we are mature the way we are is because of the things God has taken us through. Some of us, the reason why you can stand and speak with confidence because you've been through some things and God allowed you through those things. They were painful, they were hurtful, and you didn't like it, but when you came out of them, you became a better person. God has a way of chiseling some things out of you. And tonight, for God to increase the oil of God upon your life, he will have to find a way to chisel some things out of you. He will put you through pain to extract the very oil in your spirit. He will put you through some wilderness experience so that he can manifest the anointing in your life. Sometimes it will hurt you and sometimes it will cause you pain. Sometimes it will look as if God is trying to kill you. And sometimes it will look as if God is trying to destroy you. You know how sometimes God calls us and we are quick to respond without reading the blueprint. Sometimes we respond to the call before we realize that, no, 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 this is not what I signed up for. Because God always has an agenda. And so this one is not demonic. 
And when you see some, somebody, a Christian or a, a pastor going through some phase or this kind of phase, don't judge them, don't crucify them, don't criticize them. You just pray that they don't die, they don't give up because that is God's investment. And God's investment must always yield returns. I'm not talking to somebody here. And so the Bible said, and Moses, God pressed a button and he took Moses out of the palace and brought him to the wilderness so that God can build some things in him. And so that's God's way. For many of us, our experiences are painful, but God is still in it. For many of us, the, the, the water we drink are so bitter, but God is still in it. For many of us, I, I, the, the story we tell are so negative and sometimes you only smile when you are in church but when you are left alone, it's like you are drinking bitter waters. Nothing is sweet, nothing is better, nothing looks exciting in your life and sometimes you want to ask God, where are you in this, in this journey? And it feels like he has abandoned you, but hear me. Sometimes it is God's working. For all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. I pray that at the end of the day, when it is done, may you come back. May you come back like Moses. May you come back. May you come back with glory like Moses. May you come back with honor like Moses. May you come back more powerful than before. And I declare that your ends shall be glorious than your latter. Your latter glories shall be greater than the former. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace will perfect you, will establish you, will settle you. Tonight I pray that may God settle you. For everything you have been through in the name of Jesus. Number two, another way, God increases his anointing upon your life by demonic workings. <laughs> That's when God lowers the hedge around you to allow demons to mess you up small. I know you won't say amen. This is when God will do anything to extract the fighting spirit in you. Like, listen to me, as a pastor, as a leader, as a man of God, a woman of God, that God is taking something. God has to prove your fighting skills. God will back you up in the corner to do some battles alone. So that when, so that you can be proven, so that you can prove that what you have been able to, do, uh, to stand the test of time. For many of us, we have not fought battles. So any listen that happened to us, we, 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 we get weak and we give up. But when you have gone through major issues, there are things you see and you are like, excuse me. Are you with me? And so sometimes God has to lower the head and allow some demons to come in to mess you up a little bit. He said to Simon in Luke chapter 22, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. No, no, no. Wait a minute. What did you just say? Satan came to you and asked permission from you to sift me and you are my father, you are my pastor, it's not a demon, it's not my auntie, Satan. <laughs> this sophisticated guy came to you and he asked that he would sift me and you said what? You allowed him, you gave him access and you just prayed for me. If Bishop Odongo calls you and tells you that the devil is coming after you but I have given him permission to mess you up. I'm sorry, he will, be, he will sound like a very terrible pastor. But sometimes because of what God is about to do in your life, he must allow you to have some experiences because ministry will take you to places you never dreamt you would go. Ministry will introduce you to people. Success will bring you to places and encounters and events and experiences that you never thought. And so God, in order not to break you, must equip you from the beginning. And so Simon, I have prayed for you. And I know that your faith will not fail. So that when you come back, you will strengthen your brethren. Because this thing is not just for you. And so I will allow you a little pain. My God. This thing is not for you. Sometimes your pain is not for you. Your, your, your struggle is not for you. Sometimes your betrayers is not for you. Not because you did anything wrong. Sometimes the hustle, the tears, the, 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 the struggles, the difficulties you are going through. Hear me, man of God. Not because you did anything wrong. There's a group of people who are not allowed to go through what you are going through. So God allows you to go through for them. So that through you, their faith will increase. And I'm glad, I'm glad to say that God has found you worthy. Try ready enough Ayakoshi, to allow you to go through some process so that he can use you as a testimony as a model and as an example so that he can use you to be an encouraging unto somebody else and so if God allowed the devil to take you through some process hear me God 
God is still with you. He will not abandon you. He will not leave you alone. It may look tough and difficult. God, I am serving you faithfully. But why are you allowing the enemy to torment me? But the good news I like is that, yes, the enemy will torment me. But my God will never leave me. Because I love Psalm 91. He says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In your pain, you are abiding under the shadow. In your betrayal, there's a shadow over your life. In your head, there's a shadow over your life. That's why sometimes you want to quit, but you cannot quit because there is a shadow. There is a force that is propelling you to the next level. I have heard pastors say, I give up. I don't do it again. I won't do it again. And the next day, they man the pulpit and they preach because there was a higher, there was a higher shadow. There's a higher force. And I pray that no matter what the enemy will do, may this shadow carry you through. Yeah. Number three, I call that man's working. So we have God's working, we have satanic working, and so we have man's working. That is when God allow a mentor into your life. A series of people that can systematically grow you. A mentor is someone who helps you to identify your gift and improves, improves, helps you to improve them. A coach is the one that knows your gift and perfects it for you. Hear me, church, sometimes all you need to sharpen your anointing, your giftings and the grace of God upon you is to find a voice in your corner that you'll be willing to listen to. And I'll say that again. You must find a voice that you are willing to listen to. I was on my way here in the plane, I was watching this clip of a movie, they called The Creed. And this young man was fighting. And the stadium was full of people. And it was a vicious fight. He went to that battle for the first time, he lost. And he said, he want to come back again and fight. But when he went to the battle for the first time, his coach, uh, 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 who is Sylvester Stallo, decided not to go with him because he didn't approve of the bout. But the guy, out of ego to revenge his father's death, said, I will go and fight. But his coach told, told him that you are not up to the task, so don't go. But he said, he killed my father, so I want to fight and revenge my father. And he went into the ring and he was beaten mercilessly. He nearly lost his life. And then he, the coach came back again. Sylvester Stallone said, I think now you can do it. So let's go. So he took him to the ring, gave him some training, gave him some uh, tips and tactics and, and how to handle himself. And then he went into the ring and ladies and gentlemen, it was, it was more vicious than before. This young man took some hit. And sometimes you have to take some hit. Who told you that Christianity is hit free? Who told you that the devil is going to give you a, 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 a holiday? Who told you that it's going to be luxurious and, 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 and glorious all the way? Who told you that? They told that when we're growing that Christianity is going to be No, no, Christianity is not sweet. The sweetest part of Christianity is the fact that we are going to heaven. We know Jesus. Thank God for redemption. But everything we deal on daily lives. Have you been there when somebody anoints you and for the sake of Christ you can't slap them back? And sometimes in your head you've already punched them and you've seen blood coming out of their nose but physically you can't punch them because you are the prophet. That, isn't that difficult? Thank you. So sometimes the devil is going to no, corner you somewhere. And this guy took some hints and, and one major blow hit him and he fell and there was a huge noise. Everybody was cheering for this guy. But in the midst of the noise, in the midst of the heavy noise, he could hear from the crowd his mentor's voice saying, get up for you can make it. And in the middle of that, that voice was able to penetrate through 
through the crowd and get to this young man and he stood up and the finishing was amazing sometimes all you need is one person who will be in your corner and tell you that you can make it so tonight I pray that may God introduce you to that person who will not judge you who will not somebody who just believe in you somebody who will not be judgmental somebody who will say that even when you fail I will still be here to love you you need those people in your life I'm not talking to somebody you need a mentor tonight may God give you one because they will help you sharpen sharpen your anointing they will help you sharpen your anointing they will help you they will help you and then the last one is life workings life listen life will sharpen your anointing for you you just have to go through life you just have to learn to do certain things right in life. If not, you are not, you will not be accepted. You are going to learn to submit to authority and leadership. If not, you are not, you will be sabotaged. You have to learn to sub respect people. If not, the people will not respect your anointing. <laughs> you have to learn to groom yourself and grow yourself. Body hygiene is important. No matter how anointed you are, if you produce sweet perfume, it drives people away from you. You have to learn to obey the laws of the land. You can't be anointed and behave anyhow. Go through red light, disobeying the traffic rules. You'll be arrested and in prison. You will preach in prison. Even though God has not sent you there. And so all of this component helps you become better. Am I talking to somebody here? You have to submit yourself to education and grow yourself. It helps you become better. There's something in you, but that thing must be shaped knowledge gives you power it helps you to become bigger and better and so you have an anointing there's something embedded in your spirit but you need these four components to help you become better can i have an amen? amen and so i'm talking about anointing and when god gives us anointing like i said there are reasons for the anointing god anoints you to deal with demonic spirits it is important because the devil is a very sophisticated guy to deal with him you need some anointing and sometimes god anoints you to to break some some poverty cycle and as a pastor and maybe as a firstborn there are people god raises in family and he equipped them so that they will be the first to break the cycle of poverty and i pray that may you be the one yeah. to do what others have not been able to do every family has a hero every family has a champion god calls us in to equip us so that he can send us there nobody has seen success in your family receive the anointing to break the poverty cycle I said receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. There's an anointing that breaks poverty, breaks sickness. Everybody dies at the age of 40. You shall be 41, 45, 50 and you shall not die and your children shall live above that because you are going to break it. There is an anointing for that. There's the anointing for the supernatural. Amen. You need that anointing. The anointing to help with your inner healing. Some of us as a result of the things we have been through in life, we have lost our confidence. So there's an anointing you need to bring you healing. To bring you some confidence. Some of us, because of the abuse, we were so much abused that you've lost your sense of humanity. Somebody violated your womanhood. And since then, you have no trust for anybody again. Sometimes you make some terrible mistakes until you come to a point in your life where everybody's looking down upon you. And sometimes you look at, down upon yourself and you say, I'm done. Sometimes you need an anointing to help you heal the wounds that are within. If not, you will be in this place and you will hear everybody screaming and shouting and you will join them but you will still leave empty because inner work has not been done. And I pray tonight that may God bring some healing to you. Am I talking to somebody here? And sometimes we need the anointing. The anointing comes upon us to help us break some limitations and barriers that has been set for us. Some of us, we are dealing with some barricades and barriers. No matter how hard we try, nothing works. You go, you hit, you fall back. You try again, you hit, you fall back. But after tonight, I hear God saying that by my God, you are going to run through troops. And by him, you will leap over walls. And I came to tell somebody that what you couldn't do yesterday, after tonight, there's going to be a stirring in your spirit. And you will rise up and do it it is not by might and it's not by power there's going to be an inner working tonight holy spirit i declare if there's somebody here under the sound of my voice who has not been able to break the barriers and the limits over their lives when they leave here tonight may something happen somebody say i am breaking the barriers 
say I'm going to break the limit come on say like we may say I'm going to break it to now receive grace to break it something must break something must break something must break you must step out you must step out you must step out you are step out tonight you are stepping out one of these days they will come looking for you where they know you to be and they will not find you because your location is about to change because the cycle is about to break shout i received the anointing for that some of us we need some anointing to carry on reasonable burdens you are the one caring for your parents, caring for your siblings, children. And only God knows the, the heaviness on your shoulders. And these people, after you care for them, they still come and disrespect you. Some of us, we are carrying some heavy burdens on our shoulders. It takes grace. And it takes anointing. If God, if God called you into it, I pray that you shall have the grace. So there are different reasons why God gives us anointing. But from the scripture we read, the Bible said there's a guy called Japheth. In the book of Judges. Judges was raised in a very precarious moment. In the early formation of the Israelites, we had the patriarchs, we had the priests, the generals, the judges, and the prophets. And we see that Samuel, the prophet Samuel was the last judge and he was the first prophet of Israel. And the judges came into effect after Joshua died and there was no one to take over the leadership of Israel. And the book of Judges contained about 300 years of history. And any time an enemy invaded Israel, they would call on an individual who was great in battle to lead them to fight. These individuals, after they have won the battles, will be called the judges. And these judges were raised as men and women. And in all, in the book of Judges, we see about 15 judges that were raised to deal with the situations confronting the people of Israel. They were raised. May you be raised. I thought you heard me. I said, may you be raised. Yeah. Amen. And not just that, may you also be made. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so this guy called Japheth was the eighth judge in Israel. And he presided over Israel for a period of six years. He had impact. He had influence. He brought great deliverance to the people of God. He brought them hope. And he brought them encouragement. Japheth was a great leader who won battles and brought victory to the people of Israel. But ladies and gentlemen, Japheth had a very terrible background. Japheth simply means God will come. And when your name is God will come, then the question is when will he come? God, I know you will come. I'm 50 years old. And I'm getting old and the clock is ticking. And so when are you coming? And so J uh, Japheth, Bible said his father's name was Gilead. And Gilead means the place of healing. The place of healing. His mother was a prostitute. So Gilead had an affair with a prostitute because Gilead had a human woman. And his humanity he made a mistake, went into a, into a prostitute and had a child and they called him Japheth. And so Japheth had two major components and contention in his spirit. This is when you have two things flowing in your blood. The healing anointing in my blood and the halotry anointing in my blood. This is when you have the Gilead anointing and you have the flesh of prostitutes operating in you. This is when you can have your high movement and then at the same time have your low movement. Japheth is a typical example of when you have your miracle and your mistake at the same time. Japheth, I carry the anointing to heal and to deliver. But in this same body is the anointing of flesh and carnality. 
I have the power to bring salvation to God's people. But after I have done that, I carry in my flesh weakness that I inherited. And there was this contention that goes on in his life every day and every night. And many pastors will attest to this sometimes after you have done ministry and the anointing has operated, the healing anointing, the prophetic, the pastoral and the evangelistic and the gift have manifested. You finish and you realize you have human moment. Am I talking to somebody here? Come on. Am I talking to somebody here? And sometimes it becomes a struggle. This is when you have the wheat and the tear at the same time. Hear me. Everyone here, hear me. You have an anointing upon your life. But the challenge is, your name is Japheth. Everyone hear me. You carry some grace in your spirit. But the challenge is, there's a human aspect of your life. Something you inherited. And sometimes people are going to judge you by the harlotry aspect of your life because human beings by nature we gravitate towards bad news so as much as my father's name is Gilead when they see, uh, when they see uh, Jephthah what they see and what they talk about is the fact that the mother and people can talk and point fingers and say all of these things until they can kill your self esteem until the, the healing anointing in you will become dormant until the grace on you will dissipate. Until you come to a place where you are not able to believe in yourself and believe in God and be able to do anything for yourself because people will use the negative aspect of your life. Jephthah. My father's name is Gilead, the power and anointing to heal. But my mother also has a blood flowing in my vein. And nobody knows my struggle. And so the Bible said, when Jephthah was brought home, his brethren looked at him and said, you don't belong here. Because your mother was a harlot. But are we not of the same father? Why can't you focus on the father we are of the same father? And I have my father's blood in me and help me overcome. But they said, you don't belong here. So they threw him out. He was not accepted. Because like I said, humanity will use some negativity against you all the time. But the most important thing you got to remember it's number one to believe in God and to believe in what you carry in your spirit. Sometimes we allow the issues of life to make us feel like we are nothing. Sometimes our upbringing makes us feel like we are nothing. Sometimes our experiences make us feel like we are nothing. Yet, we are carrying us the anointing of God. And so let me say this. Sometimes, what you have to deal with is the reality you are confronted with. For Jephthah, the reality is that his mother was a prostitute. That's the truth. For some of us, you'll be confronted every day with the reality of your life. The reality is that you didn't have any good education. Your reality is that you don't have enough opportunities. Your reality is that you were a single mother. And you have three children you have to fend for. And sometimes the means and the resources are not there. And the church of God will tell us that let the weak stay strong so we are not allowed to exhibit our weaknesses. And so we are, what we do is to pretend like we are strong but your reality is confronting you on daily basis. You got some reality that is challenging you and looking at you in the eye and say that you are not going nowhere. And the most painful aspect of it is that when society uses your reality as a tool against you. The reality is that I don't have any good upbringing. The reality is that you are born in a village. Whereas some people were born in the palace. Sometimes life is not fair. Can you imagine when you were born in the village and you have to grow up in the village? Hustle your way to school and come back and write, write the same exams with people born in the palace. And the examiners don't care where you were born. 
They don't care that you never had opportunities to textbooks. They don't care that your parents didn't know Jack. Even though they loved you, they didn't even know what to tell you about education. And then they put all of you on the same scale. And sometimes life is just not fair. That is your reality. But the truth of the matter is that. And the good news is that in spite of that which I'm being confronted with. I am made in the image of God. And God who knows my reality has deposited some gift in me. And has deposited some grace in me. And because of that, I am not going to allow my reality to detect my future. I am going to allow the greatness that God has deposited in my spirit to, to, to motivate me to become better. Sometimes all you got to do is to take your eyes off from everything and to look within. 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 Within, Bible said that he that is born of the spirit is like a wind. Listen to me, no matter what you are going through, there's something you carry within. I wish I can say it again. No matter what you are going through, there's some greatness in you. No matter what you are going through, there's some power in, in you. No matter what you are going through, there are some things that God has deposited in your spirit that God is calling them out of your spirit. And tonight I declare that your reality will not sabotage and, and dominate your giftings. Tonight, let your gift arise and let your reality submit. One of these days, you are going to look at the face of, of your reality and say, your days of operations are over. Because the set time for Zion to be favored is now. And I hear God saying that the days of your shame are getting over. The days of your disgrace are getting over. The days of your embarrassment are getting over. I see God is about to extract something out of your spirit. There is a fighter in your spirit. There is a champion in your spirit. There is a winner in your spirit. Today, you've been down all your life. But one of these days... God is going to turn things around and the lioness in you is going to rise the champion in you is going to rise this is not all you ought to be here arise and shine somebody for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you one of these days they will come looking for you where they know you to be but they will not find you because something bigger and something better is about to happen to you because the grace of God is about to manifest in your life you are rising up to a new level if you believe it, shout yes. Yeah. Who told you you are going to die like this? Ah, tonight, may some grace come upon your life. Though your beginning is small, I hear God saying, your end shall be exceedingly great. I said, though your beginning is small, your end shall be exceedingly great. This is not my word. This is God's word. Yes, 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 yes. They have maltreated you. They have rejected you like just like that they threw you out. But one of these days, the glory of the Lord is going to come upon you. And God is going to change things around you. Oh, don't weep. Don't cry. Don't give up on yourself. Because friends have gone ahead. People you started with have gone far ahead. And those from behind are overtaking you. And you are the one that prays more you fast more you serve in the house you are always serving God and yet you have nothing to show and sometimes it seems like people are beginning to ridicule you and families are looking at you like you've been in church all your life what do you have to show but somebody go and tell them that he got times and seasons in his hands ah your time and your seasons are in the hands of God and I hear him says that for I raised the poor from the dust and the needy from the dunghill and set him among princes he said I will cause him to inherit the throne of glory may God give you the throne of glory after you have suffered a little while may God give you the throne of glory may God wipe away your shame may those who rejected you come to a place where they will see the goodness and the glory of the Lord upon your life I hear God say that for promotion does not come from the east nor from the west but God is the judge he lifts up the other and he pulls down one today they've been lifted but tomorrow shall be your turn Tomorrow, God is about to lift you. Like Japheth, your days of glory is coming. Like Japheth, your days of honor is coming. Like Japheth, your days of elevation is coming. Like Japheth, something is about to shift. There's an atmosphere shift. I said there is an atmosphere shift. I, I, you don't understand that was so prophetic that was so profound there is an atmosphere shift there's an atmosphere shift something is about to shift in your life am i talking to somebody here 
And so the Bible said they threw Japta out. And they let him go. And Japta says, okay, because you are using my weakness against me. And so Japta left and joined himself with some vagabonds. Joined himself with some group of people. But because of what was in him, the grace of God was still upon his life. The hand of God was still upon him. And Bible said Japta made an effort either to allow the Gilead in him to dominate him or the hollow tree in him to dominate him. And so there was a contention. And that's the danger of the anointing. When you know that you carry anointing and yet something is contending with you. When you know that you can sing and people can will be healed and be blessed. And yet there's something that is trying to disgrace you. When you know, when you know that you have grace to minister to people. But in your personal experience, you have a weakness you are dealing with. And you don't have the confidence to tell anybody. Because the church will not be lenient with you. And they are going to judge you. And sometimes you got to deal with it all by yourself. And sometimes you cannot tell your story. You cannot share your narrative with anybody you just come to church and go home but within you there was a contention but tonight like Jabez and once upon a time Jabez said yes I am not going to allow the hollow tree to dominate me yeah, yeah. but the Gilead anointed the Gilead anointed the Gilead anointed tonight what is about to dominate you will be the Gilead anointed what mess you up cannot hold anymore and so Japta took her destiny into his own hands and said these people threw me out but it is my responsibility to work on myself it's either allow the Gilead anointing to operate or to allow the halotry anointing but sometimes listen to me even in your weakness you still got to preach even in your struggle you still got to believe yourself and preach because nobody was ever called perfect and born perfect. Okay, after all, it is not Jephthah's fault. He didn't do anything wrong. So why are you holding that against him? Some of us, the things we are dealing with is none of our fault. We were born into it. We inherited it. However, we still have the responsibility to change it. And tonight, it seems like what has dominated your life is the negative aspect. But God told Japheth that look within you. There's another oil flowing in you. Why do you sit and focus on the rejection, the negativity that can paralyze your life? And so the Bible said one day the, Ammon, the Ammonites fought Israel. And then they looked around and, and they said nobody can fight them. So let's call Japheth. What did they see? What did they hear? I'm sure they heard something. They must hear. Something is about to shift in your life, they will hear. I said, something is about to shift in your life and they will hear. May they hear. May they hear. May they... Sometimes it is okay for them to hear all the bad news about you. So that when the story changes, the same people will hear and praise God for your life. Sometimes you got to allow them to hear the negative side so that when the story turns around, they will appreciate your God more. Who told you this is the end of your journey? And so Japheth comes and said, you guys, what do you want? He said, we want you to lead us in battle. He said, on conditions. Since when did Japheth become in charge? Since when did you become the negotiator? There was a time people negotiated your life. And they told you where you can stay when to stay how to stay what to eat when to eat how to eat there was a time when people told you that you don't belong here have you been there before the days when you wash and you wear and then you see the other group of people and you know that yeah these are the elite and you ask yourself when will i ever get here there are the days when they tell you where to sleep somewhere in the corner of the house there was a day when you see people eating jollof and salad and you i mean and, and you are salivating and you are like when will my story change 
There was a day when you've been ostracized and pushed to the to the backside of the desert, and nothing good seemed to be coming out of you. But because they negotiated your life, they told you how to manage your life. But there comes a day and a time, and I see that in this atmosphere, there was a time in this atmosphere, there was a place in this atmosphere, there's an anointing in this atmosphere where they would no longer negotiate for you. Now you are going to be the negotiator of your life. You're going to tell the future what the future must bring to you. You're going to tell yourself how my ministry got to be. Receive the anointing of the negotiator. I hope somebody understood that. You will be able to negotiate your life. Your background will no longer negotiate your life for you. Your mistakes in life will come. There will come a point in time they will not have to negotiate your life for you. There will come a time in your life when the wrong choices you made will not have the power to negotiate your future. And the only reason why that thing will happen is when the Gilead anointing in you dominates. And tonight I see in this house contention. And I hear God saying that I'm about to eliminate the hollow tree anointing. That thing that makes you feel like you are nothing. That thing that makes you feel insignificant. You know yourself better than anybody else would do. But God says tonight, I want you to understand that there are two things that are running through your veins. And I'm here to endorse the Gilead anointing. As the Bible said, they called forth Japheth. He came, negotiated, went to battle for the people. And he said, God, if I come back, if I win and I come back, anything that comes out of my house, I will use it as a sacrifice and build an altar for you. I will continue from there. And Bible said when he won the battle, he was coming in victory. Lo and behold, the daughter shows up. The daughter shows up. Dancing and celebrating God. Kabosh. And Japheth said, I have won victory that for once should put excitement into my spirit. Why this? For once, can't I have a very smooth enjoyment without any issues around it? But Japheth said, nevertheless, I've made a vow to the Lord and I'll not go back on my word. <laughs> Excuse me. And some theologians have their own interpretation to that scripture. Some say, why must Japheth make the promise in the first place? He was not supposed to. I don't want to go into that. Some theologians also say that why must Japheth kill the daughter? Because if God is a just God, why must he allow Japheth to kill another human being? That's their theology. So I asked God, I said, God, give me my theology about this. And God said, let me give you a theology, your personal theology. And God said, you know the story of Japheth, his beginning. It's a mess. And God said, I need to change this story. I need to stop this cycle. And for me to stop the cycle, I need a seed. And so the cycle will only stop if I can take a seed from you and stop the cycle. Use it to stop the cycle. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, ask every mother. When every mother takes a seed, the cycle breaks. And God said, I'm not going to allow this thing to pass on to your next generations. So as helpful as it's going to be, the cycle got to break. You got to pay a higher price. Listen, you ain't going nowhere. You won't raise an altar if you're not prepared to pay the price. If you're not ready to, one of my, what was that? Noah went, uh, Kaboshi. Noah experienced major devastation after the flood. And Bible said, when he came out of the flood, he looked around and saw how the earth was messed up. God, your own earth, you messed it up like this. God said, yes, I did. And Bible said, the first thing that Noah did was to take a sacrifice out of the animals and raise an altar unto the Lord. And so Noah is saying that, yes, I, am, I see devastation. Yes, I see calamity. Yes, I see difficulties. But I also understand that, that you gave me victory. And this cycle must break. And when God took that offering, bent offering from Noah, God said, this thing would never repeat itself 
again. Because a sacrifice was made. One of the things God said about Noah is God said, because of what you have done, the earth is no longer cursed. Do you realize that when Adam and Eve sinned, the first thing God said that the earth is cursed. Since then, God never said anything about the earth again until Noah made that sacrifice and said the earth is no longer cursed. There was a seed that changes the cycle. And tonight, I came to talk to somebody. Two things are being required of you. The harlotry anointing must not prevail. But the Gilead anointing, that grace. We are going to look into it. And we are going to lift up our voice and call on God. That they have rejected me. Until I have begun rejecting myself. They have looked down upon me. Until I am beginning to look down upon myself. They said I am nothing until I have believed their stories. But tonight, revelation comes through to know that in spite of all that they say, you are still a carrier of God's grace. I wish somebody would understand that. God has made a deposit in you. Now, Papa taught us this one. He said, everybody has one gift. So tonight, arise with that gift. And let them hear. And one of these days, the, the trumpet will sound. And the people will hear that the guy that was rejected, the guy that was abandoned is coming. And I see you coming back. You are coming back. I see you coming back. I see you coming back. I see you coming back. And God is going to turn your stories around. And it's going to tell your narrative around. And God is going to use all your negativity to bring the good news. For I hear God say that, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old, for I will do a new thing. And so God is about to do a new thing. Somebody put your hands on your stomach and say that which is in my spirit. Say that which is in me. It's coming up, hit your stomach, stand up something, hit it, hit it, there is grace in you, there is victory in you there is anointing in you, there is a lot of wisdom in you, stand it up, stand it up as you rise up to your feet, tonight something big is about to come out you are not going to allow what they gave you to dominate you but rather you are going to allow the grace of God to operate in you one of these days they must see you and say that God has done a miracle I wish somebody understand what I'm saying. Look at somebody and tell the person, this is not me. Tell the person, this is not all, all you should know about me. Say like you may say, this is not all you should know about me. Tell the person, get ready to know me more. Because the better side of me is about to emerge. Tell the person, look at me again. <laughs> And be careful the way you treat me because you don't know me yet you are about to know me tell the person take it easy and tell the person be strong because you're about to be shocked because what is about to happen through me is going to blow your mind God is about to embarrass you because he's about to bless me he's about to honor me he's about to change my story he's about to elevate you promotion is coming Jephthah won the battle and so tonight you will win the battle lift up your two hands if you believe you are winning the battle give the Lord a shout and say I am winning them Somebody shout! I see victory, I see victory, I see victory in the house. Victory is coming, victory is coming, victory is coming, victory is coming. They are about to see your glory, they are about to see your elevation. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Look at somebody, just look at somebody. Look at somebody and tell the person, look at me. Tell the person, look at me again. And tell the person, look at me for the last time. I said, tell the person, look at me for the last time. Tell the person, you think you know me. Tell the person, you know nothing yet. You don't know me yet. Tell the person, look at me for the last time. And tell the person, this is the last time you may see me like this. 
it means that tomorrow by this time the glory of God the grace of God the favor of God the anointing of God is about to come upon you there's another level there's another elevation there's another dimension there's an increase your glory is about to increase your favor is about to increase if you believe it lift up your two hands and give the Lord a shout Nebraska Papa tell somebody you are you here you here you here tell somebody you here you here they will hear they will hear they will hear they heard the bad ones they are about to hear the good ones they are about to hear the glory they are about to hear the favor they are about to hear the elevation one of these days when they shall come to church they will see the latest car it is parked there and they are going to ask who owns the car and you shall tell them it's not for the bishop but it is for me because the lord is turning my story around if you believe it's sad here yeah? Who told you? 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 You rejected me because of one mistake I made. You threw me out because I made one wrong turn. You disregard me because I don't speak the English you speak. Because I don't carry the degrees you carry. Oh, excuse me. But I carry something supernatural something divine something prophetic it is given by god and when god gives nobody can take if you believe you carry something better than degree better than education better than beauty better than wealth you carry something bigger shout yes i carry i carry somebody carry carry somebody say i carry i carry say i am a carrier yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you've been struggling in ministry. And they know you are struggling in ministry. But one of these days, one of these days, when the Gilead anointing will be activated, they will walk into your church. And all of a sudden, there is a mass choir. And when they sing, heaven opens. And when you preach, miracles happen. And they are going to ask you, what happened? And you shall tell them that when the Lord shall turn away the captivity of Zion, it shall be like a dream. Somebody shout, I am coming out. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Shout, I am coming out. Shout, yeah. Shout, yeah. And give God some praise. I see your gift is coming out. I see your gift is coming out. The millionaire's anointing is coming out. Your grace is coming out. Your glory is coming out. The Gilead anointing is coming out. Put your hands on your stomach. Something is coming out. In Overcomers Convention 2019, you are coming out. Those that rejected you shall see the glory of God. Begin to call it out. Begin to pray. Somebody pick the mic and pray with me. Pray, pray right now. Call it out. 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 Somebody begin to pray. Yandana Boska. Come on, somebody pray. If you believe you carry something, begin to pray. If you believe you are a carrier, begin to pray. Pray, pray, pray. Open your mouth and pray. Tell God, like Gideon, like Jephthah, I need a comeback. You need a comeback. You need a comeback. Oh, come on, come on. Open your mouth and pray. Like Gideon, I need a 